What's up guys? Me Chim and Chang and uh, I'm gonna make a drum gear video I guess because I've had some people ask what do you use? You know, what do you recommend and you know what's your what you, what's your, what kind of drums do you use? What are your cymbals, your heads, you know, your sticks and all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna do all that. I know it's kind of a corny thing to do, but uh yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that. We'll get started right now. Alright, so here's the drum kit. It is a Tama Swing Star. And it was an early 2000s kit, I believe. The serial number is, it says the serial number matched to an early 2000s. But uh, yeah, I've had it for about 12 years now. I got it in 2005, but I've had no problem with it. It's an entry level kit. What I mean entry level, I mean it's just affordable. And so yeah, I think you can get a complete five piece in symbols and stuff for like six or 700 now. They redid the swing star. But yeah, let's just uh, get into the drums. Okay, let's start right up here. Right time, right here. This is a 12 by 10, a 13 by 11. The floor tom is a 16 by 16. I only want to run one floor tom, just cut down on luggage. The kick drums are 22 by 16. And the, the color is actually something I did on the. If you can see, yeah, you can see the it's got some stripes. I did that. The, the drums when I bought them were midnight blue, but it had a bunch of paint splotched all over them. So I had to take all that off, and I came up with this color. It's it's not really flat black, but it's not gloss. It's like semi gloss, but more on the flatter side of semi gloss. And the stripe is like a, like an indigo type. I don't know. It was a um, paint was I mixed lavender with some black and it deepened the color. So I guess it's like that. It's like a I don't know what the hell to call it, but yeah, it's my own little custom thing I did. Worked out pretty good. People seem to like the way it looks. I've had people ask if they can if I could do that to their kit. I said, well, if you pay me, I will. Uh, yeah, I've already done uh, uh, a kit from my buddy Caleb. It's basically, exactly the same exact kit, except uh, I made his flat black with a lime green stripe in the middle of each drum. It looked pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the snare. Right there. I didn't talk about the snare. It's a Craviato steel. I got it for free, if you can believe it. Getting a Craviato for snare for free is basically almost unheard of. I'm the only one that I think got one for free. What else? What else? Um, drums, drums, drums. Um, the bass drum heads, okay. They were made by a company that my singer in my band knows. I think it's called Shamrock Printing. And uh, yeah, I, we got the, our logos. ROC, which is regardless of consequence, that's my band. Check us out on Facebook, ROC Metal. And the rack. The rack is something interesting. The rack goes all the way around. The legs are from a Gibraltar rack. And the bars themselves are from an old trampoline. I just uh, put some cuts right here to help bend it. And then I bent it some and came up with this. I wanted a, a double bass rack to get as many legs off the ground as possible. I have no cymbal stands except for the hi-hat stand. That's the only cymbal stand I have. There's an extra cymbal stand over there, but that doesn't really get used. Okay, what else? Um, I guess we'll talk about like hardware, I guess. It's all, you know, Tama hardware. Um, Tama Road Pro, boom arm, Gibraltar, standard boom arm. I uh, think the clamp and stuff right here for the China, I think the clamp an arm is also a Tama. All that right there on the for the ride. That's a that's also a Tama. I think that's a uh, I think that's also a Road Pro too. The Tom stand, the double Tom stand, is also a Tama. I'm not sure what brand. Probably Road Pro. The snare stand is a Gibraltar. The hi hat stand. Is a Tama as well, as you can see right there. Yeah, 
how much the way to go tama makes some amazing stuff very high quality stuff and uh what else should we talk about uh symbols 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 why not start right here go left to right it's late so i can't really hit them these are my very very first set of symbols i ever got my very first hi-hats just sabian b8 13 inches and you see I did a little hammering, just to kind of darken them a little bit. The older I get, the more I'm liking a little bit of a darker sound, but still something that's kind of cut, because I played death, because I played some death metal and stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, this is actually the bottom symbol for it. It's really heavy. There's the, what was the top, but it cracked right there. And yeah, you can see it. So I put some holes in it, and it actually makes them sound really good. They sound really crispy. Really crispy, crispy. The holes also allow air, air to escape real easy. So yeah, that's a nice clean sound. They sound great too. They're cheap too. The uh, first crash right here is a Stag 17 inch DH XO medium thin. They have an incredible sound. This one's, one of my, this is my favorite. It's my favorite crash. I only have two, but it's my favorite. Has a really kind of a light crash cymbal sound, but it's really trashy. But it sounds amazing, and they're affordable too. But and the raw bell, yeah, the raw bell. Stag, Stag makes amazing cymbals. I don't care what anyone says. Here's the other crash. This is a Stag 17-inch DHXO medium crash. It is a little heavier. Sounds more. A little bit more musical has more of a crash tune, like a standard crash. That one has more of a dirty crash. And this is Wuhan China. I've had this same exact China right here that I'm touching right here. Same exact one for almost five years, and it has not cracked. My methods of keeping my cymbals alive is I sand polish them. If there is a micro crack like on the edge or something and you don't see it yet but it's starting to form you can sa use a sand polish and take that crack right out and you can save your symbols wuhan china sixty dollars five years come on you can't beat that sand polish and look how look at look at the look at the sheen of it look at the sheen of these symbols they're a little dirty i was playing you can see some fingerprints grabbing choking symbols and the ride oh this is my baby this is my baby this is one of the meanest sounding rides that i've heard apart from the sabian power bell this is basically stag's version of it this is a stag 20 inch myra mega bell two cents lightly When you really start laying into it with the shoulder of the stick, it gets loud and it gets scary. Bandmates love it, and so do I. Um, drum heads. Let's do some drum heads now. All Evans. They are all Evans drum heads. My buddy Lance Campo was uh, talking about these heads right here that uh, Emmanuel Emmanuel Caplet was using in her demos. He said he loves the sound of these. So if I can't get this for him. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of. They're Evans EC2 SSTs with the control rings on the ins on the inside, and they help maintain the overtones like perfectly. These heads sound amazing. They're durable. And yeah, it's got one right here too on the 16. It, it, the 16 sounds like I don't know. It sounds like a bomb going off because it's just such a low I tune my heads pretty low like uh like when I push when you do the you know the push technique to see if, if you have any wrinkles I have wrinkles kind of on the on these two right here because I like it a big thud and when you get a good mic on here it shakes everything uh kick heads are Evans EQ2 you can see that maybe I can try to get the hole to line up kind of yeah, they're Evans EQ2. They're really good durable heads. Uh, perfect for a live setting. If you want more of a thuddy noise, go with the, the EMAD or the GMAD. 
but you can't it's hard to trigger those unless you have the access e kits but it's possible it's not impossible but yeah see there's the other one this one eq2 better and i don't know if you can see in there kind of they're all evans resonant heads they're all the genre and snare head is an st dry one of the loudest snare heads I have ever heard in my entire life. Normally I would run with the uh, hybrid just because durability and playing live a lot. But this head is perfect for live or recording because it can absolutely handle... This thing, you could probably drop a wrecking ball on it and it would probably just bounce the wrecking ball right off. This And I have, it, I have the snare head cranked like... I don't know if you can see how low the rim is. Here, I'll put the phone is pretty much right. The camera is right there. Look how low the rim is. I crank the snare head as tight as I possibly can to where the, the drum key won't turn anymore. Because I like it like that. And on the bottom is a Hazy 300. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, sticks. Let's, let's run through some sticks. Here's my sticks. I use... The Promark American Hickory, the TX747 wide, which means that they are a 5A stick, but as you can see, the shoulder, it tapers like a 5B. So that allows you to, you know, keep hitting and then not break. They're all like that. These ones are, of course, ones I've been using for a while. They got some, they got some bite marks. I've been using these since, um... August. Yeah. August. I love Promark. Uh, I was, I did, I used to use Vic Firth, but I found myself just breaking them way too much. Nothing, nothing bad against Vic Firth. Maybe it was uh, just some bad sticks, but it's happened a few times, and I haven't broken. I mean, I've broken Promark sticks. You know, there's one right down there. I've broken them before, but they take a long time. I have never had a bad one. Um. Do you want to know about like symbol wings or anything? Probably not. They're, you know, Tom and Charles. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, pedals. 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 I have mismatched pedals for the moment. This is a Pearl 900. They don't. I don't think they make these anymore. I got this. Oh God. I think what I got the kit because uh, it only had one pedal, and that pedal was a double pedal. That one. And as you can see. pedal's gone but uh yeah it's a pearl 900 and spring tension is all the way up all the way up the beaters are are another custom thing that i did they were from the the pearl 2000s the quad beater and i cut the felt out of the felt sides and i cut the other end off and now i use the uh, the round side so it, th this thing is so light now, like it is unbelievably light, but it still has so much punch to it. And uh, it's got the uh, beater lock down there. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's got where you, so where you if you take the beater out, you can put it right back to the same place. Same with this one, same beater. The pedal is a DW seven thousand single chain. It's like a friggin' bike bike spoke drive. It's not like a there's no cam on on the DW. You see the Pearl has a cam. The DW has freaking like a like a bicycle chain thingy. It's super old. It's probably older than this kit. Um, I think that's just about it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, I stuffed the uh, bass drums with one pad from a uh, couch cushion. Just one. I cut them to size and I put them in uh, what else is there anything I'm missing I don't think I don't think I'm missing anything else but yeah guys this is uh, oh yeah there's the old Ludwig that I brought back to life Ludwig accent or however you say it and the other Ludwig masters floor tom is over there too I actually have someone buying that tomorrow which is pretty cool that means I can uh, start saving up for some of these <laughs> some of these give you a hint access 
Okay. But guys, that's my drum kit. That's the whole shit and caboodle. I love it. If um, you guys have any other questions, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments. But uh, until then, guys, I'll see you next time.